Hey everybody, welcome back to Sleeping Gods. Let's see if we can stand against the Pale Anaconda and the Titanic Centipede. These are the two monsters we are fighting that have jumped us unexpectedly. And uh, like I said right up front, this is a prototype, so unfortunately I don't have any nice art for these creatures. But as you can see, there are tons and tons of creatures and uh, plenty of them will be looking pretty cool and scary and fun to fight. Uh, it's just, again, with my prototype, a lot of their art isn't done yet. So, you'll just have to imagine a scary anaconda and a scary centipede. Titanic centipede. So anyway, these are the two that are fighting us. You take all the bad guys that are coming at us, shuffle them up, and lay them out randomly. And their position relative to each other has a huge impact on gameplay. And to actually indicate that, let me show them a little bit more up close and personal just what these baddies look like. Okay, so... Basically, you can see they've got this grid with all of these different hearts and effects and all of that. And what we're trying to do to beat them is to basically cover every heart with a wound token. So you can see, to take out this anaconda, I have to hit him in one, two, three, four, five, six spaces to be able to do the damage uh, necessary to take him out. And to beat the centipede, I have to hit one, two, three, four, five damage. But um, here's the deal. There are other spaces that I can cover up with wounds. Like, uh, if I hit this space, he will not envenom us, which uh, means we get poisoned. You saw how bad poison can be. So if we cover up this space, we're not getting him closer to death, but we are ensuring, or at least minimizing, the, the chance of getting poisoned by these guys, which is particularly scary. Now, on the flip side, when he attacks, he does two points of damage plus any of these icons. He's got this and this, so that's two, four, six. When he attacks, he does six points points of damage unless I don't hurt him but instead hit him in the body or hit him in the head which means I've minimized how much damage he can hit us for and then the other interesting thing is if I hit this pale anaconda uh, and I do multiple points of damage I can have that damage spread from one to another guy so I can hit two guys at once if I play my cards right so let's see how this is gonna work out this is how they are laid next to each other. And it's why it's a very different thing if they were like this. Because then spreading damage from one to another gives you access to different things. But this is how they are laid out. Uh, we're ready to fight, although not quite. Remember, I talked before about how we have all these different cool items we picked up along the way to help us in various ways. I had a whole bunch more items. I just kept these aside because these are all related to combat. I've got the Stone of Fitness, which is very nice. I can activate it to um, allow, a, allow a character to fight a second time in a round. Oh, that is very nice. And I've got a uh, shell helmet. I can uh, give somebody a little bit of defense. And then we've got a couple of weapons. We've got a rapier, which is better than our starting weapons. We've all, and unfortunately I don't have a picture, for the branded whip, which would be cool. And we have a ring of sprinting, which could come in handy in a pinch as well. So we've got all of these items that we can activate using our command tokens. And again, I don't have any! I blew through them all to cure Pedro here. Or not Pedro, Marco here. Okay. So, before it starts, I've got two weapons. I can assign them to anybody. And Kanan Sharma here, he's got a pistol, which is really cool. It does three points of damage, plus an additional point of damage for every sight he's got. But his default accuracy is terrible at zero, so he's very unlikely to hit. So I think I will give him... I will give him... I will give him a rapier. So that he is um, going to be hitting with this thing instead of the pistol. Much easier chance of hitting. It already has a default uh, accuracy of three, so he's very likely to do damage. And I've got the whip. Let's see. The whip is particularly good if you've got a cunning character. So Kasumi has some cunning. The doctor has two cunning, though, so let's give it to him. Although his knife can use cunning as well. But hey, um, I think I will get your use of it. With that. Okay, so we've assigned weapons. We've still got three items we can use. We're up against the centipede and the anaconda, and let's get going. The normal flow of events is completely um, uh, forgotten now. Instead, on a player's turn, they are going to spend one of these combat action tokens. Now, to start our combat, Jen has two, and I've got two. And the thing is, 
Every time we spend one of these, we put it on a character, that character will attack, and then the monster that he hit, if it didn't get killed, will counterattack, and then that character is done for the round. And then another character will attack and potentially get counterattack, and then that character's done. Once all four attacks from us have been done, two by me, two by Jen, then any monsters who haven't been taken out, they've been counterattacking all the way, but then after everybody's attacked, any of them are alive, get to do a super gigantic, un nearly unblockable counterattack. And then we, these things reset, and we can start again. So Jen's got her two, I've got my two, and an interesting thing is, unlike normal, where I, Jen takes a turn, I take a turn back and forth, Jen could take both of her turns before I take mine. We can go in any order we want. And Jen, she's got the heavy hitters. Let's have her go on ahead and start out with Kasumi here, with her Wakizashi, her, her sword here. Uh, it's very handy. It does three points of damage by default, plus one additional damage for every cunning that she discards. And now uh, that's painful because, of course, you know, this is a defense ability she's got. That means, um, you know, d during the big super enemy attack, she gets one defense, so it, uh, it absorbs damage. So it's good to keep on there, but if Jen jettisons this and, you know, uh, discards it, she can do an additional point of damage. Now, she's already paid to command to train in this, so you don't want to, but, I you know, this game is all about managing resources and knowing when, yeah, it's great to have this defense, but, you know, okay, maybe she shouldn't attack right away. Uh, it'd be good to have to keep this, uh, the defend around to absorb at least one big wave of damage. So, maybe have... Let's have Mac go first. She's pretty good, too. She's uh, got a Saber here with a default actually of two. It does two points of damage plus an additional point of damage for every Savvy card that is discarded. And you can see she's got her Triage. <gasps> triage! Oh my gosh, I forgot! Since I, I totally forgot about this in the first one. Uh, folks, this is why you watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on. I'm sure Paula already noted this. But Fatigue says... Or, I'm sorry, not Fatigue. Tri tri uh, triage says, Every time Fatigue is removed from the from Mac, uh, another player gets healed by one. I did remove Fatigue from her earlier uh, when we made our gumbo. So somebody should have healed. Let's just say it was the captain. Totally forgot. All right. So, and, you know, so this triage isn't going to help us much more now um, because uh, we're not going to be removing Fatigue during this fight. So, let's have her go first. She has to pick which of these two bad guys she's going to go for. Uh, either attack the centipede, who uh, um, she has to get a six on her accuracy, or the anaconda, which is easier to hit, only needs a four. So she's gonna go for the anaconda, easier to hit. Her accuracy is two, she needs a four, and you guessed it, she draws a fate card. And as long as she draws at least a two, she will get a hit that does two points of damage, although it could do three points of damage if she wants to discard the triage or the focus mind. So, Again, there are very few ones in this deck. I'm feeling pretty good that this is at least a two, so I'm feeling pretty confident she's going to get a hit. So, uh, she says, I'm attacking the Anaconda, and there is a two. Okay, two plus two is four. She has met the defenses of it, which means she does two points of damage. Two is not good enough. She will jettison the triage, so she's done triaging for now, to be able to do three instead. And so, she's got three uh, tokens to attack here. She can spread them orthogonally, like a snake. Or the rules say, like a slash with her saber, any way she wants. So, one way she could go would be... Um, well, heck, if you just want to do damage, she could go boom, boom, boom. And this anaconda is half dead now. Three more hits to the hearts, and the anaconda is dead. But, here's the thing. The anaconda is going to strike back and do... What is it? Um... Uh, two, four, six points of damage, minus one. She does have... So five points of damage to her. That'll almost completely take her out. So I don't think she needs to do that. She needs to hit in the body and the head. So if she goes like, say, this. Boom, boom, boom. Then she has done one point of damage, but this thing will only hit now for two because the head and the body have been struck. So now it doesn't... It, we haven't hurt it very much. Now she could also instead... I mean, another way she could go. She could go boom, boom. Boom! And spread over to the centipede. Because the centipede hits for 3 plus 4, now the centipede only hits for 3. And the centipede is tougher to hit, because you need to get at least an accuracy of 6. So that spillover... Now what she can't do is she couldn't start here and then go like this, because at least half of the damage has to be done to your targeted creature. So that might be a way to go. Oh, by the way, I forgot. The centipede has armor. So we have to hit that armor as well. And that's, that armor is preventing us from being able to stop that venom attack. Right. So... Uh, she could go like that, but that means she's going to get counterattacked for one, two, three, four. Instead of going like this, 
which means she only gets hit for two. And again, minus one, so she'd only take one point of damage. But she'd be missing out on the opportunity to um, deal a blow to the titanic centipede. Um, I think... I, I don't want to miss out, particularly because, um, you know, if she does this, now we don't have... I mean, somebody could, like, start here and swing up like that, but it's going to be tougher to get that centipede. I think we're going to take advantage of it and go like this. So, boom, boom, boom. Right, because she did the extra point of damage by getting rid of that. Now, there's something else that happened as well. You may notice there's these little diamonds right there. Those are combo spots. Every time you hit a combo spot, we move up on the combo meter. We just moved up two spaces. And now anybody, if they want, can spend our combo points we've earned to get one accurate accuracy. Although, if we move up higher, we can get an extra damage or we can get a fifth combat action if we fill the combo meter all the way up. So that's pretty cool. So that's that. Um, so this guy's not... Uh, uh, all right, so she's hit. And um, yeah. Oh! Oh. You know what? I forgot. She had focus mind, which means um, she had plus one more accuracy. Interesting. I forgot about that. So she had, by default, one, two, three. So she was at three. Oh, but to get to six, she, I mean, if she'd drawn a two... All right, oh, I think it still made sense. So this plus one didn't really matter. Mm. Okay, hold on a second. I, did, I, I, I forgot she had the focus mind. I knew she was going to um, jettison the triage to do damage, but if she could hit the Titanic centipede instead, that would be a pretty big deal. Because she does have her focus... And her focus mind is only, only when she hasn't suffered any damage, she gets plus one accuracy. So she's about to take some damage, in which case the focus mind is about to go away. She's going to lose her focus pretty quick. Maybe it would have made more sense for her to use this right up front. But that means she has three, but to hit this guy, she'd have to draw three. And if she drew a two, she'd be in trouble. But, but, I think she's going to do it anyway. Instead, she targeted the centipede, she had three, and then she drew that two and like, no! Now, here's the deal. If you fail, you still get to do a hit, but you only hit for one. And unfortunately, the bad guy gets to counterattack, or the bad guy gets at you and you effectively counterattack for one. So Jen doesn't want to miss. So... She had 2 plus 1 is 3, plus the 2 is 5. She needed 6. She'll spend one of her command tokens on the Azure Spring of Sprinting to get the one more accuracy she needs. So, boom, she did hit the Titanic Centipede, which means, boom, she gets one combo off of taking out that 4. And, you know what? I don't want to get poisoned. There, you know, this guy's going to be... Po Boom! Gets rid of the armor, which is basically had to be done. And then, so the second one, the second damage just got rid of the armor, and then the third damage came over here and got rid of that venom. Now, if we hit this venom and this venom, cover those venom spaces, we cannot get poisoned. Now, the venom, these special effects won't happen until everybody's done. So we really have to focus and make sure, because uh, I don't want anybody to get poisoned, because the doc is already exhausted and can't remove that poison. It'll kill us fast. So, that made more sense. She had the big focus mine. Okay, so she hit it, and now this guy's going to hit back. He's going to hit for three. It would have been seven, but instead it's only three, minus the one defense. So that is two that she takes. And, um, oh, look at this. She could do one more point. Of, if I spend two more, she's t she can't use any of her powers anymore, but she could do one more point of damage. Yeah, she did that too to do one more point of damage so that she spread all the way over here and took out one of the Akana's hits as well. So she hit both of them. Although she can't use her powers anymore, we are, oops, yeah, we're running out of command tokens, but that was a big hit. And now, even though she hit both of them, only her target attacks back. So she takes the three minus two, uh, she takes the one point of damage, or I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, the, three, the, the two points of damage, and she is done. Now, Jen could go again, although, of course, she cannot have Mac attack. Can't have another Mac attack, but she could go, or I could go. We could do it in any order we want. Now, me, I'm at a, I have no command, so I can't act. We still have this, which allows us to remove a combat token from a crew member and use it again. We could have Mac attack again, but she's already used up this. Um, let's see, who else is Jen going to have attack? Raphael could... No, I, th I think... Yeah, Jen's going to have the captain attack. Because remember, we can share control of the captain. So Jen is having the captain attack. 
And the captain ha is in an interesting situation. She's got a rifle that does four points of damage, and it could be five if she jettisons this card. That's huge. It gives one defense back, but like the pistol that Rahman has, it has an accuracy of zero, so it is very hard to hit anything. But because she's alert, I can discard this. I, normally, I would discard this to do an extra point of damage, but instead, I can discard this to give her one accuracy. So she went from zero to one, and let's use our... Let's use our last two command points to take her from one, um, one to two. So she's at two accuracy now. Which means as long as she draws a two, she can hit the anaconda. So, I'm feeling good. Let's go for it. Although, we've now used up all of our command. So now we're just on our own. That Please do not draw one. Oh, I don't know. Oh, if we draw one. Again, she will succeed. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to shuffle a little bit. Just a little, quick lucky shuffle of all the stuff. Just a quick lucky shuffle. Uh, I'm so scared. We're going to do it. Um, lucky shuffle for the win, though. Here we go. Not a one. It's a four. Okay. Well, it was likely. Again, there are very few ones in here. So, right. So, it's four. So, actually, we way overpaid. Four, five, six... Which meant she did have enough to go for the centipede, but I was going for the anaconda. So she did over... All right, but anyway, so she's going to do four points of damage. One, two, three, four. Um, and again, they could spread over to the centipede. Let's go. One. Oh, by the way, we, we still got our two combo. One. And... Oh! Hey, you know what? We didn't have to use this command. Yeah, we did, because we didn't have the combo up for it. All right, so... So that's one on the body. So now it's not hitting back as hard. Two, three, and then coming over to the centipede, boom. There's another combo. So now we're back up to level two on the combo meter because we've hit... Oh, wait, we're at three. We're at one, two. Okay, so she could have. Right, hold on a second. Sorry, folks. Hold on a second. Before she does her hit, I am not happy about spending two command to give her plus one because we had, we had hit these ones on the combo meter. So she spent this to get the other plus one. So that was one plus the thing she discarded plus that. So, we saved these commands. We've still got them. And so, her total four damage is one, two, three, four. Okay, and now, neither of these bad guys are hitting hard. Or, you know, they're, they're hitting weak now because we've covered up. And we've done a little bit of damage to both of them. They could both still poison us, though. So, anyway, so Jen is done. But she now takes two minus one. She takes one point of damage. No problem. Okay, cool. Jen can't do anything else. It's my turn. I've got no command. Jen's still got a couple. So what am I going to do? All right. All right, I've got two guys. i got to make sure we got to hit these Venoms because I want no poisoning done. So who am I going to attack with? Well, uh, let's go on ahead and go with the Banded Whip, the Doctor, because this has a base accuracy of four. And it does two points. Now, it has no defense, so the Doctor's going to get hit hard. But um, he can go from two damage to three damage by discarding his feint or his coordinated repair. And the ship hasn't taken much damage yet. You know, this is a nice skill to have if we were further in the game and um, we were really worried about the ship sinking, but I'm not too worried about that right now. So, um, yeah. Let's have him attack. He's got four. Now, as long as I don't draw one... Um, he's going to attack the big. He needs a six. So I just want to draw a two. I just want to draw a two. All right, a five. Fine, fine, fine. Okay, cool. We, we hit this guy. We're hitting for two. We'll get rid of the coordinated repair. So that's actually three points of damage he's doing. And I will go... Ah, that unfortunately, this to get this venom means I have to waste the damage in the body, which does nothing. Because again, I, I, I've blocked these other things. So I could go over here to get start building up a combo. Or I could go that way. Ah, not happy. Not happy. Not happy. You know what? You know what? He can't poison us if, he, if he's dead. How about I just go like this? One, two, three, which gives us a starting to build combo. And now if we just do one more point of damage to him, which we could start here and then spread across, then, then we, we somebody will get poisoned. But we do have a doctor on board. I think that makes more sense. Let's go with that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And so now he strikes back. He does three minus nothing. 
Uh, or, yeah, the, the whip has no defense, so the dock takes a full three points of damage. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Six points, and he's out. And if everybody's out, we lose the entire campaign. But we're, we're going to make it. It's just a question of how much damage we're going to take. All right. So, now, I just want to... Oh, I just want to use somebody to hit here to take out the centipede so it won't get a chance to poison us. We'll still take one poison, but say la vie. So, who is the best shot of hitting this guy? Um, right. Okay, we're going to go for the weak one and then spread across. We only need to do two points of damage. So, let's just have Lawrence go. All right. So, Lawrence has a default of two. And he does two points of damage. He could get rid of his leadership, but I don't want to. This leadership is awesome. It is an incredibly great power. You know, once per turn, I can lose one team morale to basically redraw fate. That's what that uh, symbol is, uh, because that's the, there's the symbol for fate. That's huge. I believe you can use it in combat as well if things just go absolutely dire. So I, that's why I don't want to jettison this to do an extra point of damage, but I don't need to for the way I've set myself up. So he's got two. Let's just draw. Let's not see it. All right, cool. That's a six. Easy peasy. He's doing two. Although, oh, he is going to get struck back. If he if he said he was aiming for the anaconda, then the anaconda will hit back. If he said he was aiming for the tight the, the centipede and beat it, then um, all right. So then okay, I need to shuffle again because this is an interesting choice. If we go for the centipede and we get the hit, the centipede will go away. There will be no counter strike. If we go for the uh, the anaconda, we'll still take care of the centipede, but then there'll be a counter strike and he'll take two points of damage or one point of damage. So, but you know he's got two. And he'd have to draw a four. No, 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 no. I'm gonna stick with the original plan. Um, you know because again with the six it would have made more sense to go that way. But who knew if a six was coming? So I went the other way. Boom. Boom. Got no combos or anything. And um, this guy is taken out. Oh, wait. Oh! No, no, no. Um, this is not... A, th that gray thing means there's a shield. Once the shield is down, he's gone. If I put another damage, it gets rid of the venom. But it doesn't matter. He's not going to bother us at all. This guy is toast. He will not be doing the big hit. He will not be poisoning anybody. We can focus on the other guy. But the other guy does strike back. And does two minus his one defense, so he takes one. I should have gone the other way, but what if I'd drawn a two? Then I would have missed. That's the thing. See, if I had drawn a two, if I had attacked here and I had two plus two or three and missed, I still could have done just a single point of damage and hit that spot, but the guy would have been able to hit me first. So I think it made more sense strategically. But if I was a little bit more dire straits, I might have taken a bigger risk. Okay, so um, we've everybody's done. Now the bad guys get to counter-strike, and there's only one of them. So, and he's lost his body and his head, so he is only hitting for two, and I have to pick one character to take that damage. I can't spread it around, and, um, let's see, who, who, let's see, well, Audrey hasn't taken any damage yet, so let's have her take, uh, take the hit, and Venom, ouch, so that's not good. Sorry, um, Kylie, or, or what was the girl's name from Firefly? Anyway, hardly matters. Uh, that's who, obviously who she's meant to invoke. All right, so that was it. They've done a counter-strike. It would have been much worse if both of them were there. But anyway, so now we start again. And we get to go. And so uh, we got four hits to basically just do one, two, three points of damage. And I'm, I'm pretty confident about that. Uh, oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Let's not have Audrey do it. Because remember, let's have Kasumi take it. Because during the, um, the enemy attack phase, the defend will absorb one. That's why we didn't use the defend. So she only took one point of damage instead of Audrey, who would have taken two. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So now, here we go again. Now, Kasumi... Okay, I want to do three points of damage and just, boom, get rid of those. So who can do three? Uh, it is... It is Kasumi. Kasumi steps up to bat. She has a two. She needs a two. Uh, so she's just going to draw. And it's a three. Made it. And she's just going to do three points of damage. She doesn't have to get rid of her defend, which I was thinking about doing earlier, because three is all I want to do. One, to who? Three. And we just moved up on the combo meter again. Nice. Okay. And it's going to strike back. She has no defense, so she takes two more. Ouch. So that's not good, because this is only during the, you know, the big super strike where they all strike back. So she's hurting for certain, but she has set us up, because now we have plus one. We only have to do one point of damage. Who has the best? It's this whip. This whip has a four. It literally cannot fail. So let's have uh, the doctor with the whip go. 
Uh, Dr. Jones! Alrighty, and even if we draw a 1, it was a 2, even if it was a 1, we succeeded. So, we got to do 2 points of damage, all we need to do is 1, and BOOM! Uh, good night, Gracie. Alright. So, that was that. The pale anaconda is no more, and we were successful. Deedly doo 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 bom 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 ba bom ba bom ba bom Alright, so, let's take stock. We have uh, can no longer use our Azure Ring of Sprinting. We didn't use either of these, so these are still available to us. That's uh, nice, nice. We can save them for later. Um, a uh, fair bit of damage and some poison. B uh, oh, and we burned through some of our training to do it, but that's the thing. I mean, the, the nature of this game is, you know, if I had not burned through that training, I would not have been... That extra point of damage you do to push and cover that one extra... Um, grid space on their uh, on their attack meters that's everything so um that's it let's see i've totally forgotten where were we we were in space 21 so what happens in 21 we get two coins we are rich rich i tells you oh baby if we have five coins we can go to port which is maybe what we want to start working on and uh one meat and return to the ship all right so we get some delicious centipede meat Yum, yum. Come get some. All right. So that's interesting. We have three meat. Um, nice. So we could go on ahead and cook up some soup and get our morale. And, um, but I mean, we need to heal people. So we need to make flapjacks, which means we need wheat. Now, if we don't keep going, if we come back this way. Um, if you go to port, uh, which is this symbol right here, if you spend five gold, basically what happens is everybody loses one of their fatigue tokens, everybody heals by one, the ship heals by one, and I forget, there's something else as well. Um, yeah, so it's a big deal, but it's super duper expensive to do it. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, right, we get to spend our experience points. And we spend our experience points to level up with things like the jury rigged engine or the inventive chef. Uh, every, every character has a whole bunch of cool powers they can get if we earn enough experience to level up. And so that's what I was saying. Over the course of the game, the longer you play, the stronger our team gets. And even though the dangers we are under get worse and worse, well, we rise to the challenge and get better and better and more and more equipped to take on whatever comes. So, uh, anyway, I think... I've totally forgotten. Was that Jen's first or second step? As I had come over here, and I think Jen had come in. Yeah, and so her second step was she checked this out and we got waylaid. Now let's not forget, at the end of her turn, we still have this leak, an ongoing leak. Um, at turn in, perform a craft nine challenge. If we succeed, we can get rid of the leak. Who is the most crafty among us? Um, fortunately, Jen, uh, Aubrey here, she is a little tired. So she only has a three. Right, we have to do a nine. I want to get rid of this. So, Aubrey is going to go from tired to exhausted. That means she cannot partake in um, challenges anymore until she uh, loses that. And Raphael is going to get tired, but that means we're going to have four minus one because she was tired. Uh, so that's three plus three. That's six. Now we need to draw a three. Um, I don't like my chances of drawing a three. Does Jen have... Do I... Ah! Again! If I had a command, even though it's Jen's turn, I could spend my command to give Jen this full steam ahead so that she would have one extra, but I don't. I don't want to exhaust both of them and then fail at this thing. But none of these other characters have any, um, any uh, what do you call it, craft at all. Uh, Lawrence here does. So again, if I had command, I would throw him in just to guarantee that we don't fail. I wonder. I wonder if it's worth waiting until we draw a card so we can get their craft skills up a little bit more. Because I don't want to draw a two. If I draw a two, this will be super painful. But let's do it. It's a five. Okay, fine. Phew. We uh, cure the leak, so we're not going to take any more ship damage, which is good because, like I said, it's it's not too hard to heal our teammates, but it is very difficult to heal the ship. That's tough to come back from. So we got rid of the leak. Phew. That was Jen's turn. Okay, my turn. Uh, I get to draw another card, which once again, I'm going to have to discard some. Why am I getting all of these? Uh, I'm just going to discard that one I drew. I get three command. I should really hold on to some of these. And by the way, that was it. There is no more command in the um, draw pile. All the command is either on us 
or it is um, on the uh, tied up on characters who've used their special abilities. So I got to command. Uh, we have to have another event. I'm sure it's going to be terrible, whatever it is. Okie doke. Lilo Plurata. Lilo, oh dear. A shadow darkness. The water. Uh, a shadow darkness. The water below the ship. It darkens the water below the ship. Okay. Uh, we can outrun the creature and take one ship damage, or we can attack the creature. A strength of three, and we take damage, but we get some more meat. All right, so it's my turn. I have to deal with it. Do I have strong, strong people? I have a three, and he isn't tired at all. Yeah, I can do it. That's uh, I don't want to take ship damage. I'd rather, right, I'd rather get tired. So, Lawrence is already tired. All right, so the doctor hasn't done anything. He's going to get tired. So he's doing a three, and now in the future he would do a two. And... All right, um, Cannon has a two. Let's have him get tired as well. So that is a five, which means even if I draw one, I can't fail. I drew a six. That was way overkill. And um, we, so we did, I don't want everybody to be tired. I don't want everybody to be tired. No, no, because it's just, da it's health. But no, if he had taken a lot of damage, he could have been killed by this. So let's just live with it. So we didn't take any damage. That's fine. That went away. But now everybody's tired. We need some soup. Or more importantly, we need to get back here. Because if we come back here with five coins, we can just instantly wipe out everybody's exhaustion. Because everybody's getting tired. Everybody's All my guys are at negative one. The captain's at negative one. She literally can't participate at all. They're still doing okay. So we could push on. All right. Anyway, though. So that was the event. And now I get to do two actions. I think my first action, it's time to prepare. Which means all of these tokens that were locked up on um, characters and items go back into the supply. That was half of my turn. But um, now we can use those actions again. We can use our own actions, etc., etc. And I'm going to use... Didn't somebody get Venomed? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. At the beginning of the turn, she took one point of damage from the Venom. The Doctor is in. He's going to get rid of that Venom again, so it doesn't keep hitting. And now he can't do anything anymore. But now, for a second, it's time to sail, folks. I could come back to... That's what I should do. All I got to do is come one, and then Jen could come here. But we don't have enough money anyway. We need five. So let's be brave. Let's sail on. And there's my target. Alzaria, where I can discover the origin of the mysterious dagger. So when I come in, I could come in on this zone or this zone. My choice. Let's see. Either way, to get to Alzeria, i got to go through choppy waters where I need strength or savvy. I've got a strength. Jen's got a savvy. Let's see, so, so on her turn, she could use the savvy to skip past this. So we'll come in here and come down this way through these rocks to get over there. Jen will use her savvy to avoid that damage. Yeah, okay. So anyway, that was it. My turn is over. I could, um, or Jen could, explore 62 or 79. Or we could just keep on sailing, getting where we need to go. But before we get there, we need one more coin. Because when I pull into port, I want to have five coins and heal everybody and repair the ship a little bit. But if I spend all my money on that, then I won't have any money for shopping. Oh, decisions, decisions. But folks, I think I'm going to stop right there because now you've pretty much seen a little bit of everything that Sleeping Gods has to offer. And if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner of the screen or follow those show notes in five, four, three, two, one.